Hello and good morning. Uh, my name is Miguel Baca and I am uh, DAI's Global Tourism Practice Lead. Um, thank you so much for coming this morning and um, I'm very excited to discuss this um, very timely topic around COVID-19 and its impact on the tourism sector. Uh, perhaps we're not going to be discussing how is this affecting right now the tourism industry. We all know and are painfully aware of the huge limitations in travel and movement of people and its devastating effects on the tourism industry. But what we wanted to focus on today really was to discuss what lies ahead. What can we expect in the future regarding tourism and how COVID-19 is going to uh, change the way we travel, change the way we consume tourism, and most importantly, I think is going to change fundamentally the practices that we implement to develop the sector. Um, let me start by just providing you a little bit of a framework of what is it that we want to talk about. I think right now, everybody is focused on the immediate effects of COVID-19. And as I said at the beginning of the discussion, they have been devastating. Um, the World Tourism Organization uh, is expecting that uh, by at the end of 2020, tourism would have contracted by an astonishing 35 to 40 percent um, worldwide. Uh, in terms of tourism arrivals, um, international tourism arrivals, that is, and as well as tourism revenue generated by international visitors. Uh, we have no official data at this point, but preliminary data and anecdotal data also indicate that for the domestic tourism sector, particularly in countries that rely heavily on domestic tourism to move their economies, like the United States, um, the the effects of the pandemic and the global lockdown and the subsequent uh, economic crisis are also going to be steep. Um, and that is the situation. That's what everybody is focused on right now on the very short term, right? Basically, is trying to minimize the impact of COVID-19 on the tourism sector. Many different countries have implemented many different strategies, and I don't think there is... Um, one approach better than the other because the extent of the de economic devastation is so big that all of them are destined to have only partial effect. What do I mean by this? What I mean by this is different governments are taking different approaches. Some of, some of them are trying to uh, implement fiscal policies, right? Like there is a freeze in paying taxes, freeze in paying fees, uh, freeze on... Um, on government charging a specific uh, taxes. Some countries are implementing uh, fiscal stimulus policies, and by that I mean a series of policies that are uh, geared towards uh, giving the industry some uh, uh, tax relief, meaning they don't have to pay certain taxes, um, they're going to be providing with certain income to, to keep people in payroll. That's particularly useful for the hotel industry and the airline industry. Um, not so much for those sectors of the tourism industry that rely more on direct consumer uh, visitor interaction. Certainly that includes uh, very vulnerable populations within the tourism sector like indigenous communities, small and medium-sized enterprises, handicraft shops, food establishment. Those are probably going to be harder hit and it's going to be a lot more difficult to be able to implement effective uh, uh, fiscal policies. To complement that, a lot of other countries are implementing economic stimulus uh, packages. For example, they are paying hotels to be used as uh, COVID-19 medical centers where they can isolate people. They're using hotels and they're paying the hotels for their services so that uh, when, they, when people are coming from abroad and they have to be quarantined, they're just going to be putting in there and so forth. So, what we mean by fisc direct, uh, direct uh, monetary stimulus is that the government is paying directly the tourism sector to keep providing some basic functions, meaning to keep them alive. Um, that, of course, has been met with very mixed results, right? And we have all heard, for example, that companies like Airbnb um, and the airline industry have been terribly affected by COVID-19 and the fact that people are, are not moving around. But uh, so... Needless to say, we are looking in the short term 
uh, to a very dire situation for the tourism industry. And I think that as, the, as different countries start to control the pandemic a little bit better and start to opening up their tourism industries, uh, we are going to see some uh, ease into, into that phase. And we're going to see what kind of measures are implemented in place in order to continue the tour, to allow the tourism industry to continue to be open. Uh, but most importantly, from my perspective, and I think from the perspective of people who are interested in the economics of tourism, is going to be, we're going to be able to evaluate and analyze what's been the impact of these monetary and fiscal stimuli policies on the tourism industry. Right now, it doesn't seem like it's been extremely effective in all different sectors that compose the tourism industry. Um, obviously, the, 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 the the people who have benefited the most are the airline industry and the hotel industry, but still um, there's going to be some some economic damage that these policies are not going to be able to avoid. And that takes us to what we're looking at in the midterm. What's going to happen from now until the end of the year, or to be quite honest, and based on many different articles and many different conversations we've been having with different experts, articles that we've been reading, um, not only from, 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 from the regular media, but also from specialized media uh, that looks at, at, at trends in the tourism sector. Um, it doesn't seem like the next stage, meaning from the moment the tourism industries in different countries start to open up, we are, we are not sure when, how long that next stage is going to last because a lot of it is going to depend on the vaccine, meaning... The tourism industry um, is not going to continue existing the way it used to exist before COVID-19 until a vaccine is found. Um, and many people speculate that even with a vaccine in place, uh, some of the trends that are affecting the tourism industry are here to stay. It remains to be seen. It, it, it's really very difficult to, to say at this point, but it's a valid argument. So. Let me go back to then the, the second stage that we're looking at right now, which is when the tourism industries in different countries are started to opening up until God knows when we are going to find a vaccine that is going to allow that are going, that is going to allow people to resume their normal lives before the uh, the pandemic. This stage from our perspective is going to be the most critical in determining what path the tourism sector takes for the next not five years, not 10 years, but for the, for the next 20, 25 years. What's, this is going to be a very important stage to understand what's next for tourism. And why do I say that? I want to look at three very specific trends. One, um, we are looking at the end of mass travel, um, particularly to coastal resort destinations, the way we knew it. Um, because of what we're seeing in countries like the United States that have not been very good at controlling the pandemic and have opening up their hospitality sectors and, and their tourism sectors ahead of the summer season. They don't want to miss on that because that's where they make the most of their money. Uh, what we're seeing right now is a resurgence in the number of cases, right? Uh, we've seen that Florida, Georgia, and other different states in the southern part of the United States are seeing some of the highest rates of infection, of reinfect or inf of infection in in the world over the last week or so, um, and many analysts think that this is because the government or the different state governments were too hasty in opening up the tourism sector in particular. And by tourism, I mean bars, restaurants. Uh, hotels, etc. I'm not talking about just hotels. I'm talking about the broader sector. Uh, one of the things that we've seen, for example, in, uh, in the last couple of days is the governor of Texas all of a sudden issuing an ordinance so that bars are not allowed to open anymore. So they were allowed to open. Now they're closing them down again. And this is what, what I'm trying to illustrate with these facts are that if this stage of the reopening is proven to be extremely difficult. Uh, in terms of going back to business as usual. There are going to have to be accommodations. There are going to be focus on reducing the number of people interacting with each other. And that is going to mean two things. Volume, mass tourism is out. It's going to have to be. People who don't want to be in close contact in the same pool with a bunch of people who are sick. And the second factor is a very slow and painful uh, resumption of international travel. 
what does this mean? That international travel, which was leading the growth of tourism across the world for the past 10, 15 years, is going to come to a halt for a number of reasons. Airline capacity, uh, reduced numbers of passengers that are going to be accepted in airlines, in flights. Um, a lot of these flights are going to cease to be profitable and probably are going to be canceled. So the restrictions that are going to be around the movement of people between international borders is going to be very much reduced. And what that means for the tourism industry is this second trend that we're looking at, which is a growth of the domestic tourism market that is not focused on volume. I just did something about combining the two uh, the two trends that we were talking about, right? For one, in one hand, like less mass tourism market, on the other hand, less international travel. So what does this mean? What are we looking at in this in this next few months? We're looking at a tourism industry that is going to have to prioritize long haul um, uh, travel and specifically domestic and regional travel. Those are the, going to be the main drivers of the recuperation of the tourism sector uh, over the next months until we find a vaccine. Now, why do, was I saying that this is a critical moment uh, for the tourism industry internationally? Because these two mini trends that we're talking about, the, you know, uh, the prioritization or at least the preference for domestic travel that is not massive in scale, is going to imply a reinvention of the entire tourism sector. Especially for certain, this is true for, 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 for a specific countries or for some countries more than others, for some destinations more than others. Some destinations who have been doing an amazing job at focusing on high high quality experiences with high, high quality products uh, in non-mass environments, i.e. nature-based tourism, adventure tourism, soft tourism, those are probably going to be uh, in, in, a better, in better shape or at least are going to be better aligned with the market trends that we're seeing emerging. Destinations like coastal resort destinations um, are probably going to be um, more affected and are going to be in a position where it's going to be a lot more difficult for them to really um, realize a full economic recovery. I want to point out, for example, that uh, a few days ago, there was an article in many newspapers about a lot of people in Britain flocking to the beach. And I don't remember the name of the beach. I think it was Bournemouth. I'm not sure. But there was so much judgment and so much criticism about the people who actually went to the beach and, you know, visited there and, and spent the weekend there with a bunch of other people. Nobody was wearing masks and whatnot. The outcry internationally and nationally is so high that these instances are going to start fading away, meaning governments are going to crack a lock harder on this kind of behavior because they are not perceived as socially acceptable in the time of COVID-19. So there's going to be a lot of pressure for uh, tourism industries that rely on this kind of market to slowly fade away. And this is a very important uh, uh, issue to consider because the tourism sector in general is not financially strong to, with, to, to, to tolerate or to support a year of poor sales and still be on business for the next season. By and large, the tourism industry is composed of small, medium-sized enterprises that rely on sales and cash at hand in order to meet their financial obligations. And with a market that is antagonistic to that kind of business model, these companies are very unlikely to continue existing next year or in a year and a half from now. So depending on how quickly um, the vaccine is found and people can resume travel as they used to, a lot of these industries, a lot of these tourism businesses that rely on, on mass international market are probably going to be out of business in a year or a year and a half, if not sooner. Um, what it means is, what this means is, by the time people are able to again go out and travel freely and choose an international destination they want, they're probably not gonna, they're gonna, they're not gonna have those business that cater to them anymore. 
and they're going to be looking for a different kind of experience. So I think it's going to be fascinating to keep monitoring the situation over the next few months and see what role does the tourism sector take after this. One thing I can tell you is not going to be the same. Tourism as we knew it before uh, February 2020, it's pretty much over which presents a lot of different challenges, but also a lot of very exciting opportunities for more sustainable and perhaps, you know, more, uh, you know, healthier financially in the long run forms of tourism that do not deplete the environment, that do not deplete our cultural and natural resources, but actually focus on interactive experiences with people who after five or six months of being locked down in their houses are looking for a lot of human contact and experience. So. Uh, I really hope that uh, this seminar uh, was interesting to you. I am going to give, uh, put a, a bunch of different links to different articles at the end of this presentation for you to look at them and make your own mind about what you think is going to happen. Again, this is not an exercise on, 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 on reading the future, but it's rather trying to interpret the data that we have uh, the best we can and try to predict what is going to happen with the tourism sector. Um, I think, as I said, enormous challenges, but at the same time, enormous opportunities. And I think the people who are come out of this stronger and better than ever are those people who have the capacity to make lemonade when life throws them lemons. So uh, good luck to everybody out there. It's been a pleasure to be part of this seminar series. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.